Okay, good morning. Well, actually, good afternoon in Florida, Hi, where I'm at. found the new good morning routine. Let's try it together. <laughs> Currently, next. There are disadvantages to technology. <laughs> that wasn't intentional. <clears throat> um, I'm sitting in the, my Casita travel trailer, and uh, this is what's going on around me right now. Um, we've got some thunderstorms moving through. Uh, my location is a little circle. Um, where did the little circle go? There it is. Up there. I uh, see the circle. That's us. Uh, we're in High Springs, Florida. And I'm using my Casita travel trailer right now as my studio. <laughs> so, um, I'm doing it. I'm going to try to do a couple things at, at one time because I am a... Um, I am a coordinator, county coordinator for the Community Collaborative Rain, Hell, and Snow Network. And right now, I'm going old style. Uh, we have a thunderstorm moving through here. And uh, I am making little mark, check marks on here. I'm going to add one. Every time I hear it, thunder. Uh, I report thunder to Kokoraz, along with a lot of other stuff that I do. Uh, our primary mission in in Kokoraz is to um, monitor, record, and report um, precipitation. And um, anyhow, so I'm, I'm uh, one of the sideline reports that we have is a report for doing thunder, and that's what I'm um, I'm doing on the side here. What I wanted to do uh, is give a little review. I was going to do a box opening when this came in. Uh, sh um, how do you pronounce that? Shafe? Shafe tools? Or sh I don't know. Shafe tools? Not sure how to pronounce it. Um, one of the things I like about this, number one, I believe, I've got to look at the paperwork, but I believe these are made in the USA. Um, look at this great container, I mean, this great uh, roll that you get with a set of chef tools. I got the set of 12, and um, absolutely incredible, um, incredible quality holder for these tools um, that come, and it comes standard with this. We have now had 20 claps of thunder that I have recorded, or rumbles, I guess we'd call them. Anyway, these, this is the set of chef tools that sells for $95. Um, I did this, I think, through Amazon. I can't remember. But anyway, uh, this is how they came. I have not touched these tools other than to glance at them. And right now, I'm making a list of all the tools I've got counting this, including this set. Um, I've been working diligently. I, I'm, I am taking uh, Chris Pice wood carving workshops um, and learning to um, wood carve all over again. I'm going back to the beginning just like I was a brand new wood carver, never touched a, a piece of wood with a chisel or a knife. And Chris stresses at the very outset of his course that the one thing you must get down is sharpening your tools. And these tools are very nice. Well, let me just go back. I did not get to do a open. I was going to do the box opening and then go into this. And when this was brought in and handed to me where I'm at, they had opened the box. I guess they thought it was theirs. Opened the box and took this out and come into the living room and handed it to me and said, here's your tools. Um, so I was glad to get them. Anyway, but I didn't get to do a box opening. But anyway, um, <clears throat> there's a nice little card that comes with this set. I would have to find it. I don't know what to do with it. I think it is signed personally by the CEO of the company. These are guaranteed. They put a very good guarantee on their, their tools. And I'm I, so far not having sharpened a single one of these tools and cut a single piece of wood i am impressed so far now i've been used to two cherries and swiss made and that was a german brand with a w i've got a, at least one tool by 
And so I've been using those type and caliber of tools for many years. And I do know, I am, I am a very good scroll saw artist. Um, I do some pyrography, and I've done very well with that when I do pyrography. Um, wood carving, I've done okay. I've been wood carving since at least 1986. I believe that was when I completed my first set of anything I tried to make. And that was a set of na a, a nativity set. Um, and that I was not... That was kind of one of my first projects in wood carving after learning some basic skills. Um, and they're just block characters, blocks of wood that I've rounded off the corners a little bit and was able to follow a lady's book. I'll I had to find the name. It was, uh, let me think of the name of it. Um, oh, it was about carving a, a, a folk carved nativity or something along those lines. So look that up. A real sweet lady. She sent me an email. Even there's another thunder. I'm going to put down. Um, so anyway, uh, so what do I think about these tools? You get a, a good set of tools for a very small price. And when I first saw these advertised, I looked at the reviews. And when I looked at the reviews, I'm going, how in the world can you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve good carving tools for ninety-five dollars. I've got some carving tools by themselves that probably cost ninety-five dollars that I built. I have collected since nineteen eighty-six. You know, buying them one at a time. Um, <clears throat> I've got about ten, I believe it is, uh, other carving full-size carving tools, and I've got a gazillion palm carving tools but I'm going back and looking at this as though I've never carved a piece of wood I want to clear my mind and be ready to jump into Chris's work and learn all that I can from him over the next year or two and then I'm going to move on to another master carver who, who offers a similar course of study and I'm going to do that guy too I want when I die I want to die as one of the best wood carvers in the United States. That would be my goal. Um, that would be one of my life, you know, my bucket list goals of life. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit <clears throat> so that you can see if I can zoom in a little bit, see where I'm going to be at. Uh, can I not do that on this? I'm using my old cell phone. Well, I thought I could zoom in on this. Well, I guess not. Um, I'm using my old cell phone because my new cell phone is sitting over here with the radar going. So I can, I've got a storm moving off to the north, the, the um, northeast that was coming through, making all the rumblings. And um, let's see here, let me move him over to the. And I've got some more stuff back behind there coming off the Gulf. <clears throat> and so we'll see how much thunder and lightning we get. Um, so to give you an idea of what Chef Tool sends you, this is a 5-20 millimeter gouge. You get a bent gouge, 20 millimeter, and uh, it is a 7L 20 millimeter. You get a 7 to 14 millimeter gouge. You get another neat little gouge, 9 to 10 millimeter. You get a five to eight millimeter gouge. So primarily you're getting gouges in most of this set. Seven to six millimeter gouge. Um, one to eight millimeter uh, flat. Uh, this is a, what do you call the chisel with the, anyway, this is a chisel. It's a type that's got a pyramid at the end. Uh, it's not one of the flat. I think this, is that called a skew chisel? I'm learning still. Uh, 8 to 10 millimeter, uh, you have a bent gouge, which I had a small one last night that I absolutely ruined. Uh, the center, uh, what is that called, the heel, just completely blew out on it. I um, don't know what happened, but one of the things i got to fix. You get a nice little skew chisel, a 1S 8 millimeter skew chisel. You get uh, a 12 
uh, 12-6 millimeter V-tool and you get a, I think you would call this a vayner, 8 to 4 millimeter um, gouge, which I'm going to call a vayner, it looks pretty small. And then even smaller, oh, this is, this is the, that's probably just a gouge, this, is, this would be a vayner, I believe. Um, and it is a 3, I mean 11 to 11-3 11 millimeter um, gouge that I would call a vein. So you get a nice set of tools with this set. Um, now, the question is what happens when I go to my Tormac and try to sharpen these? That's going to be the real, the real test. Now what Chris Pye does is he points out that when you are wood carving and you when you're a wood carver and you go buy a nice shiny new tool and you're all excited about it and and you're ready to start carving wood all right a lot of like um like the um swiss made and then flex cut and all those you get those ready ready to use put that in quotation mark ready to use so that's been my problem for many years i bought those saw that they were ready to use and I just started carving and um, I had all kinds of trouble I set it down for a number of years uh, I bought a Tormac along the way and did not really learn that tool well enough to uh, I, I got pretty good at sharpening my um, my wood turning tools I don't do a lot of wood turning but I'm going to do more um, but anyway one of the things that Chris that Chris taught me so far. When I take this tool and present it, let me see if I can find something I can use. Okay, let's say this is a piece of wood and you present this tool to that wood to carve it. Look at the angle that I'm at. Chris teaches you to take this bevel right here. You see that bevel right there and then it goes into your angle. Chris teaches you to take your carving tool and commission it, what he calls commissioning. And what he teaches you to do is to take that bevel and move that bevel back. Uh, in some cases, as, as much bevel as there, I've taken that much more bevel, taken it back further and gotten that much more bevel. And he recommends a 15 to 20 degree angle. This is a better, this I think is better than, that may be 25 degrees, I'm not sure. But it's a pretty good. So what Chris is doing when he drops that bevel down is you're bringing this tool further down to the wood. Closer, the handle's closer to the piece of wood you're working on. And as you're working, instead of doing this and this tool's wanting to go down into the wood, this comes back and your slide, you, you enter, you slice, and you exit. That's how he teaches you to, to do your carving. And getting the, the sharpness down is absolutely essential. And I can speak to that from personal experience. Um, Chris talks about people who will start carving and they get frustrated and stop. I've been one of those people for a long time. Um, I thought the problem was my skill. And that is a problem. I've got a lot to learn. But I'm going to tell you right now, using Chris's sharpening methods are absolutely awesome. Because he, first of all, stresses, he, he tells you to pick one tool, which I've done in my role. It's not in here. I think it's over at the, uh, at the house. Anyway, that I'm staying now. I've got, I, I brought my whole Tormac unit. Number one, my goal was to learn my Tormac and really get comfortable with it. Really get to learn how to how to do things. And I brought all of my I brought my Tormac and I brought all of my jigs except for one. And wouldn't you know it, I left this I left the one jig at home. I didn't think I would need. For what I was planning to do because it was primarily billed as a wood a wood turning tool wood turning sharpening tool a jig 
Uh, it also, I find out from uh, one of the, from Wolfgang, a guy that did, uh, he's from Germany, and he was at, he was at Tormac doing seminars with a gentleman. They did, I know they did at least four, and I've learned watching those four, almost one hour, those are 45 minutes to an hour sessions. I've watched all four of those now, and I've gone out back to my, my machine and tried over and over and over again. One tool I took uh, early on was a tool like this one, and trying to do trying to do on my Tormac what Chris does is I was trying to use my my um, three, uh, 250 grit I think it is stone to carve too much with. I didn't switch over to the 1000 grit and use a stone dresser that changes the normal grind. Uh, from 250 grit and I changed it to, to 1000 grit. Uh, anyway, I overdid it and what happened was Chris also teaches you to keep these corners. He stresses the importance of the corners. And what I had done is in the process of my sharp, sharpening, I'm going like this with a tool. All Each swipe I was going all the way in to the corners. And before I knew it, I had rounded corners. I had uh, 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 say you took a, a took this into say six, and you take uh, a sixth or so of this this if you break this down into six or fourths, let's say fourths. I had the the center two um, were okay, but then the outer two were curved, and I lost my I had lost my corners. And so what I wound up having to do after watching and reading and watching and reading and watching and reading some more, what I found out I had to do was to go back to that tool, take that tool into the stone blunt like this. This is the, the wheel turning. And I had to blunt that off and take that all the way back. I had to take that all the way back until it uh, got into the corner and made that corner square again. And what I had was a thick line of light in the center and thinner lines of light on the outside. And what I learned I was doing wrong with the Tormac was you have to keep an eye on that line of light, not just know that it's there, but you have to sharpen based on where that line of light is. And see, I don't see these tools uh, shift when they sell these to you, they ask you not to buy this set if you're not if you're not willing to sharpen your own tools. And what's happened, I'm sure, is they put out these great sets of tools, and beginners have bought these things up because they're 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 a cheap set, and then they go to start trying to carve with them and they can't carve anything because the thing and tools dull. So they very upfront now will say, don't buy this set of tools if you're not willing to sharpen your own tools. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, go buy something else, like shape or flex cut or whatever. And then you'll get frustrated with their tool because those things aren't sharpened right either. Uh, one of the things I've learned through Tormac is, has been that when you buy a tool from a factory and some 17-year-old or 18, 19-year-old kid uh, in one of his first jobs is in the factory and they've taught him how to sharpen, quote unquote, their tool, he goes in, he's never carved in his life. He may not even be a woodworker. He just got a job with, with the company, in this case, Chef, Chef or Chef or whatever this is called. And they pay him just to carve exactly like they taught him. To, I'm, I'm sorry. They taught him to sharpen exactly like they, they teach him to sharpen it. And what happens is you get a sharp tool, but it's not ready for wood carving. So Chris Pye teaches in his course that what you have to do is commission your tool. And the first thing that you do, I take a black marks a lot and I'll take that black marks a lot. I'm just going to use a sharpie for a sample. I'll take that black marks a lot and I darken. I use a bigger marks a lot by the way. Um, but I, my, That's over there with my Tormac on the back porch. And I'm going to tell you, one of the best things I ever did as an early woodworker was, buy, was invest when I was making money 
Uh, I got a bonus one year of about $15,000. I got one every year while I was working that company. And uh, I took part of that bonus and bought me a, a Tor Tormac uh, 2000. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, that, that was probably the best investment I've ever made in woodworking. Uh, even though I haven't used it very much. Now I'm learning to use it. But I blacken this out. And then you put this on the wheel and you, and you eyeball it to get the angle right. And you turn the wheel and you see where it has scraped back here. And you do that until you get it the perfect angle. And then I, what I will do with these, I take these on my angle master, put them on there and figure out, say this is 25 degrees. Well, Chris Pye tells you to take this heel out, bring that heel way back and turn that heel, I mean turn that tool into a 15 to 20 degree angle instead of uh, a 20 or uh, a 25 or 30 degree angle. Uh, most most carving tools come, I think, around 25 degrees. I'm shooting for 17 degrees on all my tools. And so the first thing you do is you set your Tormac to to rough grind at three. I mean, 250 grit, whatever that is. The the rough grind. Use the rough grind on your dressing stone. And you start, when you start carving, you back this off. You, and when you check it and look at this, you'll see that it's, that the, the marker is wiped off up here on the heel. Nothing down here. So I'll kind of play with that until I get it where I think I need it. And then I'm, I'm spending however much time it takes on my tour mat wheel. I'm going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm watching, and then I'm looking at it, I'm watching that line, uh, that heel, I'm watching it move back, and I'm watching this move forward, um, so I'm getting closer and closer to the edge. And you do that until you get it to the edge, and then you get it, when you get it, and the line of light is getting really thin, I switch over to 1,000 grit, and I finish it with 1,000. And then you stay you stay on that until you get until the line of light they call that the line of light when you see a glisten on the end of your of your tool you take that line of light and when that line of light is just almost gone I switch 1000 grit and finish it with 1000 grit and you stop as soon as that line of light disappears and you start to see a um, oh you start to see the corners, I mean the cutting blade basically turn over, it gets a, uh, I just draw, drew a blank on what it's called. <laughs> anyway, you get a little turning and you start to see where you were at the edge and it's sharp. You take that then off and you scrap it. Now on this tool, one of the things I've also learned so far dealing with Tormac, I don't know how well you can see it. I, I wish I could get this zoom in, I don't know why I can't can't zoom in or out for some reason. Anyway, uh, this is not straight across as I look at it. Um, this, I see some some curve. It's kind of wavy in here. It's, I mean, it's almost non-visible. The first thing I will do is I will present this to my stone today. This is my stone, I say. I'm going to present this. I'm going to blunt this end off and make sure I'm perfectly square across the end. So I'm going to take that and get it perfectly square, and then when I turn it over, you're going to see, instead of a sharp point like I've got now, semi-sharp point, you're going to see a blunted all the way across that tool. But when you look at it this way, you're going to realize that now you've got a straight, perpendicular edge, and then you go to your rough grindstone and start working that until that line of light lessens and disappears then you switch to 1000 grit and finish the sanding then you then you you go back again to um, your strop and I've got a wheel on my Tormac that's the strop it's got the little attachment on the end too that also will do the inside edge now one thing I have not gotten down yet on Chris's teaching and I haven't started doing yet the first thing he tells you to do the first thing he, he would tell you to do on this tool is to take my slip stones and develop a five to ten degree angle just at the very tip of this stone for an inside bevel 
and then you go back and do this sharpening and bring your bevel back and up to where you get that 17 degrees I'm shooting for. Okay, does that make sense? Um, so I'm trying to hold this where you can see that. Um, anyhow, um, so that that's the chef, chef or chef, I'm going to call them chef, tools. And I'm very, I, I've got to tell you, based on the price, I put out a, a question on a uh, wood carving list on Facebook. And I asked the question, can, are chef tools any good? I said, how can they be a quality set of tools at this price? Heck, I, I, like I, I've got some gouges that are $75 gouges probably that I bought way back when when I was, when I was making a living. I'm on Social Security now, so $95 is a lot of money to me. Um, so my next step in this, this set will be I will take that tool I will take that tool, 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 I'll come back to that tool later, I'll come back to that tool later. I will probably take that tool, that tool, that tool, and that tool. And no, not this tool, that's a V tool, I'm going to do that last. Uh, I'm not good at V tools, so I've got to learn Chris's method of V tools and get brave enough to sharpen that tool. So I'll take one. I'm going to come back to that one. I'm just going to look at the straight gauges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've got seven tools I'll start sharpening today. Then later on I'll come back to these specialty tools like this one, which is one that I butchered uh, on, on my other set. Uh, I got it. I ha thought I had it just right. This one was weird with that. I thought I had this tool just right. See the curve? I got this in there. I sharpened it uh, correctly per Tormax instructions and per Chris Pye's instructions. I was working to bring this heel back, um, this bevel back, I mean, um, bring it back further in. And somehow I blew the whole middle of this thing out. And I didn't know it until I, I saw something weird in there. It looked kind of like the metal was it looked like the metal was coming off of the the off of the underlayment it's like there was a coat of something that was flaking off and i put it on my my i did I manually put it on my um wheel my drip my um strop wheel and all of a sudden this blew out what i realized had happened that wasn't something flaking off that was the whole stinking metal so i, I wound up with a demon <laughs> I wound up with a demon um, gouge because in the middle it was it was way down back down about probably 25% into the thing and it looked like it had horns on either end it blew the whole end of the of the tool out and I can't fix that the way it was manufactured because it's so far back it was back it it was back at least it was back at least as far as that heel. That's how far the hole in the middle of the tool went out. The whole center of the tool blew out and left these edges out. And what I, I was trying to not do was I'm trying to stay out of the corner so I don't round them and concentrate mostly on this area and then work the corners in, you know, a little bit. And I overdid it on, on this end. It's not the Tormac's fault. It was an operator error. Uh, so when I do this one, I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to make sure I've really done a lot of sharpening before I do that. So that's where I'm at on that. Um, so do I recommend Tormac um, wet grind sharpeners? Yes, I do. Absolutely. Those things are absolutely fantastic. Uh, there are some cheaper versions out there. I guess... Um, um, patents or whatever ran out. Some companies put out some cheaper versions of the Tormac. Uh, I think Rikon maybe have done, has done that. Maybe somebody else. But I have the Tormac 2000. They now have a T8, which is kind of more equivalent to my Tormac 2000. Then they have a small hobbyist version. It's a T4, I think. But I'm think, thankful to the Lord that I wound up with the Tormac 2000. 
Uh, I really like that machine. It's a more commercial grade machine than the T4. Um, if I was buying it today, I'd get the T8, which is a, nowadays their prices have gone up drastically. A T8's about $800 without any jigs. Uh, there may be a couple things thrown in there, uh, but you don't get much. And you can buy packages like a wood turner's package, a wood carver's package, etc. And they give you all the different jigs you need for various uh, types of work that you're doing. And I do everything. I do scroll saw art. I do wood turning. I do carving. Uh, if I were asking, if if God was a genie, and he's not, okay? <laughs> but if God, if, if I rubbed Aladdin's lamp and Aladdin, Aladdin gave me three wishes, my number one wish would be that I would become instantly a master wood carver by Chris Pye. That is my favorite kind of wood work. Uh, I want to be a master wood carver someday. That is my goal. Will I ever reach that? We'll see. Um, probably not because um, I've only say I'm 65 if I, if I do it and live 20 more years um, then I've only got 20 years to do that and I don't know how long I'll be able to woodwork so we'll see but anyway uh, that would be my bucket list thing if I had my choice would be if I, if I had to give away all my other woodworking skills and only concentrate on one thing, it would be wood carving. Um, so that's what I, the other thing about the shafe, um, I, one thing I wish they had done, and my my advice to shafe would be to, when they redo their these things, and I would buy one gladly and put smaller tools in this one, I wish they would make these pockets deeper. Make them to match, make them three-fourths up into this to hold your tools more steadily. Uh, they do have a great idea here in making this flap, but unlike most most wood um, rolls I've seen, if they have a flat at, flap at all, it's just at the bottom. But this is also how you load your roll for wood carving. You load, the, these do not go down into here, uh, into, into the, where it's cutting this, they go out the sharp end up. Then you alternate over to the, up, uh, you go down, sharp end up. Then the next one comes in, down, sharp end up, sharp end up, sharp end up, sharp end. You alternate them all through the set. But uh, Shafe did a great deal putting this on there. And if that wasn't good enough, good old American uh, company, if they are. They, they're making me think they're American at least. I'm going to check that. I think they are. They also put a flap.